Hello YouTube, today we're going to be doing the CVT fluid change on a 2015 Honda CRV. Uh, what you're going to need is a jack, some jack stands, and you're going to need a drain pan. You're going to need a long funnel or fluid transfer pump or whatever you want. You're going to need a 3 8 drive ratchet. You're going to need a 12 millimeter socket. Um, the drain plug crush washer. Uh, I will post the link in the description. I got these on off the internet. I think they were probably eight dollars or so, and you get ten of them, so that's plenty. And then you're gonna need five quarts of either Honda. Uh, what is it? Each so Honda HCF two. Um, fluid. Uh, you can get genuine Honda. That's what the dealership recommends, and that's what Honda recommends. But they want a lot more than regular synthetic oil. So uh, this, you can see, it's just specifically for CVT, and you just make sure on the back that it says for specifically for HCF2 Honda motors. Um, so. First thing, come up here, have your engine, oil drain plug, and down here, I cleaned it off so you can see it. It's bright yellow, it's the fill port for the transmission fluid, so this doesn't require any tools, you just grab the handle here and pull it up, and there you go, it's off. So set that aside, and then next step, position your drain pan. Slide it under there for now. You're gonna grab your 3 8 ratchet and your 12 millimeter socket. I already did some movie magic here and broke the bolts free for you, so you don't have to watch that. Uh, so this is so your license plate is here, straight back. You have your drain bolt and you have your level check bolt. So you're just gonna pop this off. I already broke it free. I'm gonna pop this off. Um, and this is gonna be a magnet underneath here, so it should have some uh, some metal on it. Um, a normal normal mount is just like some light shavings, just like that. Um, and you can see it drains out pretty fast. So, and you can see our crush washer came off, so we don't have to worry about fishing that off of there. Sometimes they get stuck on here pretty good. So, just make sure you get the compression washer off there. And we'll let this drain for a little bit. We'll set this right here. Whoop. Well, perfect. And then you take the you take the check level out here. So there's no filter in here. Um, the only only thing this transmission has is a magnet to catch any sort of metal debris on the that's flown through the system. So, um, so that's this. We'll take that over to the bench while this is draining, and I'll show you what comes off of it. Uh, if you have any sort of like chunks, like big chunks of metal on here, then that's not good. Um, but you can see it came off of my finger. Um, that's just very light uh, metal shavings. So that's pretty normal in these. Uh, so we'll set this right here. Take that off. So we'll just rub that and get some of the metal off. So you can see it's black here. Um, this oil is not going to turn black because uh, there's no engine compression gases or anything so all this is is just metal out of the trans so um, kind of smells rubbery because there's rubber in your transmission and these CVTs so um, we're gonna leave that there we'll clean it off real good and we'll double check our new crush washers against our old crush washer and that looks pretty pretty exact. 
Um, so I've sh said this in other videos, but it's important, so I'll say it again. Um, there's a flat side, and there's a rounded side. So a flat side goes towards whatever you're bolting against. Um, so you're going to set it, clean this off real good. And then you're going to go round side, down. Round side down, flat side up, so that way when you bolt it, it's going to compress against the flat side and it's going to make a good seal. So there's the drain bolt. We'll just go ahead. And so some of the kits that you can get, you can buy these kits to service this. Um, and some of them come with a new drain bolt and magnet. And I believe it comes with a crush washer, but... Uh, the magnet's never going to go bad for the life of the car. <laughs> um, and then these are pretty hard to strip out unless you're really, really not sitting it in there properly. But you should never have to replace this. Um, so we'll set that down here. And it's still dripping pretty good. So we'll just wait. And there's no crush washer on these because the fluid level should never be as high as this bolt. Um, this bolt is just simply to tell you whether or not your level is correct or not. So, we're just going to set these over here until that stops dripping. Um, and one thing, the I like to keep the oil temp, or get the oil temperature up pretty good in these. So that when you change it, uh, you're getting getting everything circulated through. So, we'll just do that, and then while that's draining, we'll talk about this. So, this is the drain plug, or not the drain plug, I'm sorry, the fill plug. Um, I think it also acts as some sort of a vent. Um, so, it says H uh, HCF2 required fluid, but there's plenty of companies that make uh, stuff that satisfies this requirement. So, I've never had any problems. This thing has 100 and 120,000 miles or so on it uh, runs fine so you can do whatever you want though you can spend the money and get the Honda fluid um, I've tried to buy the Honda fluid online a couple times actually when I first got it I tried to buy it and they shipped me uh, did just a substitute fluid so I didn't get what I ordered anyway and I had a little note in the box that said that it's the same stuff so <laughs> clearly it doesn't matter um, you just clear this off, just get all the dirt and stuff off, I like to keep stuff as clean as possible so you're not contaminating the oil with external debris. Um, and the manual on this, for whatever reason, I don't know if there's a reason or not, it's pretty similar all the way around, but the manual says that this little bar right here is supposed to face forward, so when you put it on it's going to be like this, I don't know why that is, but uh, it is. So. Anyway, let's see if that's done draining here. Nope. It's not. So this drains for quite a while because this oil is super thin. Oh, look at that. It stopped right when we got down here. Uh, it, this oil is really, really thin, so it takes a while for it to drain. But on the bright side, you do get all the stuff out of it. So, so you want to make sure that your crush washer indeed did come off of this and ours did because we looked at it on the bench so that's just a little drip so I'm not too worried about that so go ahead and reinstall the drain plug and this system says it takes 4.5 quarts of oil so it means you gotta buy 5 quarts of oil which is unfortunate because then you gotta keep the other half quart until the next time you change it so, um, and there's there's all kinds of uh, different maintenance intervals on this depending on your driving type. Um, I'll post that in the video when I find it. But this one's been shoot. I think I'm pretty overdue on this one. This one was I think I did this one at probably seventy or eighty thousand. So it's been probably it's been probably forty thousand miles or so. 
uh, actually probably did it at 60,000 so it's been a while so anyway changed it but you could see that the oil wasn't wasn't completely trash and it was still shifting just fine just it was time so I think your uh, your maintenance book shows all the different intervals that it can be so now that you got the drain plug put back in there uh, they recommend well what you're supposed to do is you lower the vehicle back down cool lower it and we'll just leave it there and once you lower it you put your your clean funnel in there make sure everything's clean it doesn't get all the dust and stuff in there that comes from being in your garage okay so your funnel just set it up so that you can pour something in there and not make a huge mess everywhere um, and so we're gonna go through we'll do four and then after four we'll take a look and make sure that we're not dripping out of the hole we shouldn't be but it should take 4.5 so you just kind of So if you had a, uh, oh man, what is going on? <laughs> it's dripping already, what happened here? Oh, you know what, it's probably draining from the, yeah, it's coming right out of the hole, so you gotta put the top bolt in. Oops, glad I caught that, huh? So, put both bolts back in. <laughs> it's probably gotta hit that to come come all the way through here so we'll just put that bolt in there yeah I always put a little bit there so and let's, let's just go ahead and tighten that oops and I'll post the torque spec to this also but it's probably not super high. You just kind of tighten it until the crush crush washer compresses here. I do believe it did. So, huh. can't believe it came out of there so fast. <laughs> anyway, I'll try that again. Clean that off real good, and just leave this right here. Making a clean spot in the garage. That's okay. That way we can see it when it drips, because it's supposed to drip later. <laughs> Not now. Okay, here we go. Let's try that again. All that one let's just clean up the mess a little bit more here while well, it's draining out there you go learn from my mistakes So this is probably drained. We'll do number two, and then three and four.
Yeah, sometimes you can find the uh, the five quart jugs of this fluid uh, as well. I couldn't find it um, at my local store, so I had to end up getting the five individual quarts, which was more expensive, but still much cheaper than the Honda stuff. So it was fine. I think this stuff was eight bucks a quart or something. And the five quart jug was only uh, 30, 35, I think. So, but oh well. I'm not sure what the Honda stuff was, but I know it's not cheap, so. Four, and then we'll do about a half of this. Um, at the end of the day though, if you put too much in, even if you put all five in, when you open that check level, you're gonna have a half a quart come out. So realistically, not the end of the world if you overfill it because it'll only allow so much fluid in there. So we'll do our best to do a half. Even though we spilled a little bit, so maybe a little more than a half. So that's about a half right there. We'll do a little more. I'm betting that's about enough right there. So check it here. So we'll put the plug back in. Make sure you get all the dirt and stuff off of here because this is just rubber, so dirt really loves to stick to it. I think when I first got the car this was stuck to this rubber but over time it won't be. And there we go. Got all the all the junk off of there. So this is just a plug so it just pops right into the hole there and then you want this face forward or down on the car whichever way you're looking at it. Good. Just go in here remove your funnel. Try not to drip on your exhaust. Just plug it in here. Goes in pretty easy and then we'll face it forward. I don't think that does anything, but that's what the book says. So I'll do it. There we go. So it's in. Uh, okay, so now what you do, come under here. Uh, I'm gonna get a new rag and clean that up. Just so I don't lay in it. I like to use these microfibers just because you can throw them in the washer by themselves and you can get all the oil and junk out of them and then use them again. Okay, so that's all good.
cool. So the next part is kind of the the trick. Not really a trick, but part that a lot of people ask about. So you go in, once you get your Once you get the transmission fluid changed and put back in there, you start the car. And what you're going to want to do is put your foot on the brake. And you're going to shift through all your gears for about 30 seconds each. So reverse. You're going to let it sit for a little bit. And all you're doing is letting that fluid like really circulate through real good. Okay, when you go to neutral, might not be 30 seconds, but that's okay. And I think this procedure is for if you're doing an actual teardown, because I can't imagine the fluid's actually going to come out of the transmission, out of all the passageways, you know. Um, but we'll do it just because it says to. And drive. Next one, Oops, missed one. And you just kind of listen and you can hear the car um, kind of shift into gear and change the RPM a little bit. Well, you can hear it idle a little different. So we'll go slow. And go back all the way through. I'm not sure if it says if S is for sport or if S is for second, but I'm assuming in a this car it's probably second. Drive. And then you can hear it's not making the same kind of shifting noises as it was, so it's good. Neutral. Reverse. Everything still works fine, so we're going to turn it off. And you're going to go underneath the car now, again. And you're going to put your drain can back under. And you're going to grab your 12 millimeter socket. I'm pretty sure I kicked mine. Where did it go? Still on there? Nope. Okay, so what did I do? Ugh. Oh man. Set it up here. Grab my 12 millimeter wrench. I don't know where the socket went. That's fine. Yeah, I'll find it eventually. So now you're gonna come in here. You're gonna set your drain pan up, just in case the level's not correct. If the level's too high, you'll get a bunch out of this. If it's not too high, you'll get just a little bit out. So after you've shifted all your gears, drain plugs back. You're still in. Uh, you're gonna come up here to your level check bolt and take it out might get a little bit out 
You don't want to make the gear shifting take too long because this fluid will be hot. Because uh, you are going to get some out. Oh, and there's a crush ring on there. Look at that. So, I'm not going to change my crush rings. Uh, they're usually pretty good. I know they say to, but they also say to use only Honda Genuine Fluid too. So, so you'll get a little bit out. Not too much. So, not a lot came out. Um, so, now what they tell you to do. Now that you have your drain plug out. Well, it's not going to matter because if we fill it, it's just going to come out of there anyway. Um, what we're going to do. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put this in and I'm going to fill it up with the rest of the CVT oil that I have and I'm going to let it all equal out on its own. So I'll just make that kind of tight, hand tight, and then we'll fill it again with the rest of the CVT oil. And this isn't what the book says to do, but that's okay. So pull that. that in there and we'll grab the rest of that quart and we'll put the rest in I only have a little bit in there anyway so that's okay we'll see maybe I was just perfect but probably not so we'll just put the rest of that in that shouldn't make too much of a difference I'm gonna try to clean up all that, that I spilled down there but We'll see. Cool. So uh, that's the rest of that. Pull the funnel. Sorry if this is a long video. You can skip through it if you need to. There we go. There we go. Put that there. Carefully, your exhaust is hot now. So. So that's back in. So we'll pull this plug again and see if more comes out. Curious to see if I was just exactly perfect with the amount that I put in. Yeah, look at that. I was. <laughs> that's alright. It's like a flush. That's funny. No. That's probably exactly how much I put in too. Oh well. Anyway, so I'll tighten this up and then uh It'll be all done as soon as it stops dripping and I'll clean everything up and that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if there's anything else you guys would like to see, um, let me know. I will either comment, uh, I'll either comment on what you're asking about or I'll make a video on the maintenance you're asking for. So, okay, have a good one.